What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Next Level Lawn Care video. Today, we're gonna talk about biochar. We're gonna talk about what exactly it is, how it's made. We're gonna make some, and then we're gonna spread a granular biochar on the lawn. And we're gonna talk about why, if you're not using this, you're wrong, you should be. Check it out. Forgot one of my props. So, um, biochar. In essence, biochar is the exact same thing, basically, as charcoal. The same charcoal that you use to grill your burgers or cook your steaks or whatever, as long as you're not one of those sissy uh, pellet smoker users. Um, that's biochar. Now, biochar is typically not the same thing as charcoal. Charcoal is usually made just from hardwoods. Um, they burn hotter and more efficient, and better for cooking food grade type stuff. Um, <clears throat> biochar really, and, and honestly, probably most biochar is made from just wood, um, but the term biochar can mean anything uh, biomass like some roots from the tree that I pulled out of the front yard, uh, twigs and sticks, any random woody type thing like that. You can make it from corn cob husks or, or whatever. Um, anything that you could put in here, burn off all the water or vapor and leave just behind the charcoal. Um, so we're actually gonna make a little bat. So this is just a collection of some roots. There's some uh, rose bush thorny bits in here. There's um, twigs and sticks and all kinds of stuff. Stuff you wouldn't really cook with for food, but can be turned into charcoal and hypothetically spread across the yard if once it's uh, ground up enough. Now, why would we use biochar in our yard? Well, this is something kind of interesting that I came across while I was doing some research on how to make charcoal for some of my other hobbies. And um, I came across a documentary called, uh, I think it was like The Search for El Dorado or something like that. And they go into detail about these civilizations that used to live thousands of years ago um, along the Amazon and, and various areas like that massive civilizations that there was no way they could have survived um, with how poor of quality the soil down there was, except for in specific areas where they found what they call terra preta, which I believe translates to like dark soil or something of that nature. It's basically a very rich, very fertile, incredibly rich, incredibly fertile soil that was used to grow crops to support these massive civilizations back then. And it really consisted of that really junk soil that they had um, that wasn't fertile at all. A couple of other things like, uh, like broken up chunks of, of clay, which helped with retaining moisture in the ground. And basically uh, carbon, a carbon source, which was charcoal or biochar that had been mixed into these soils and allowed it to become incredibly fertile soil and allowed them to grow these kind of crops. At least that's what the scientists think happened. So, <clears throat> let's uh, make a little bit of biochar here. So this is a, a little, what, what you call a TLUD or top lit updraft retort kind of thing. Just made out of a little what is this, one gallon paint can? Get all that to fit in there. And you just fill it with all your different, I mean, you could use weed stems or leaves or whatever you could put in here as long as it's dry and it'll burn. Um, and we could, we're gonna turn this into charcoal. So I'm not gonna go about the whole how to make one of these things. There's various videos you can find on the internet of how to make a top lit updraft like 
got bent. Um, style retort. Fairly simple. I'm going to cheat a little bit because I can't find my uh, other fire starter things and use a little bit of this nasty stuff. So, essentially, you would light this and let it get burning. And then you'll put this chimney stack on there. And there's holes drilled in the bottom of that can, which allows oxygen to come up through the bottom of the can. And then this is like holes drilled around this collar here, which are essentially, it allows for another burn cycle um, to burn off all the wood gas and stuff like that and not allow the wood or whatever's in there to turn into ash. It just burns off all the volatiles within it. And, whoo, I'm hot. And this is a fairly smokeless operation once it gets going here. And that's it, we'll let that burn. Once it burns all the way down to the bottom, we'll put the lid to the paint can on top to cut off the oxygen flow and snuff out the fire. Adding a carbon source to our soils um, is gonna help. If you think about it, charcoal is used for a lot of things. Water filtration, obviously cooking. Um, it can absorb toxins. It can also absorb a lot of good things, a lot of nutrients. Um, so putting this into our, our soils, there's something like, <clears throat> so charcoal or uh, biochar, I read in an article once, something to the effect of one gram of this has the surface area of an entire tennis court. Um, <clears throat> It's filled, if you looked at this with a microscope, there's millions and probably billions of little tiny cracks and crevices for things like bacterias and nutrients and stuff to creep into. And when this is incorporated as sort of a soil amendment into our yards, um, it allows the soil to retain a lot of those nutrients that we need for our grass and keeps them available to the grass. Um, for a very, very, very long time. Um, the life of this in the soil is estimated to be, you know, upwards of 500 or a thousand years. So every application of this that we do to our, our soils is just gonna make it fertile for hundreds of lifetimes to come. So essentially this biochar that I've gone with is charcoal that's been ground up into a very fine powder. And then they've, made it into these granules that are water dispersible. So just a little bit of moisture onto these and these pellets will dissolve into the soil. Not sure if that's showing up. Will dissolve into the soil into almost nothing but dust. But each one of those tiny little specks can hold on to an immense amount of nutrients. Um, and bacteria and stuff that is very good for our soil. So it says this bag could cover 45,000 square feet for per application, whatever. You could put that entire bag down on the ground right now. Um, or you can do it over time. You can do a application every week or month or two months or however often you want. You can never over apply that product really. Well, maybe you could if you were trying to grow grass in 100% biochar, no soil or anything else. But every time you put this in the ground and then you add something like a fertilizer, that's gonna help keep that fertilizer in the ground longer. Um, instead of some of it just leaching away as we, as we water um, or the rain comes, that's gonna help hold on to that and keep it in the soil available to the grass. It's also, if you're into gardening or anything like that, um, incorporating this into a compost mix or something like that, or whatever garden soils um, you want. They've showed studies where um, 
the increase in yield could be as much as 30% with, within just a couple years of use of this, um, adding just this compared to a control because it's holding on to those nutrients and keeping them available to the plants for longer. It also can filter. So biochar also filters out things like uh, toxins or um, acids or anything. It can help neutralize the pH of your soil. It's just uh, starting to go now. Now putting something like biochar into your ground, you're not really gonna notice anything right away. Um, it's kind of like an, an investment in your soil. You're not gonna put this down and then notice beautiful dark green grass next week. But over time, it's gonna help maintain those, maintain your turf at the next level. Now, if you are interested in making your own biochar, that little cooker that I have, that I use for just hobbyist type stuff, um, that can be scaled all the way up to 55 gallon drums, as big as you wanna go. So if you have a big piece of property and you do a lot of brush clearing and stuff like that regularly, you could save all that stuff, throw it into that cooker. And this is almost done already in the six or seven minutes it's been going. Um, <clears throat> You could throw it into a big cooker, get it all crushed up, and then spread it across your land. Even in bigger chunks, amending that into the soil is still going to drastically improve the fertility of that soil. So hey guys, if you're enjoying this content so far, um, please do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe to the channel. There's gonna be a lot more stuff like this coming throughout the future as we continue to work on this project that I have of my yard. Um, if you're new here, go back and check out some of my other videos. This is a full renovation right now. That's why the grass doesn't look the best. Um, it was just planted about a month and a half ago, two months ago. And we've grown this from seed and we're gonna continue to work on it. We've got some projects to do out here, some landscaping stuff that I, I got planned for the future. So if you're enjoying this, hit that thumbs up and subscribe. All right, so I think that's done. So we're gonna cap this off and snuff it out. So we can see here, I, I spilled a little bit, but it definitely was done. We were starting to get a little bit of ash development. So normally I have a little bucket of sand that I set this in and kind of bury it in there a little bit so that the oxygen can't continue to creep up in through the bottom of this can. However, I didn't have that for some reason. I wasn't thinking about it. So I just put this down in the dirt and scooped a little dirt around the side of it. Anybody know what this weed is called? It uh, It's not growing in the grass really, but I keep finding it all around the edges. Just wanting to pop up. Amongst other various little ones. But it's been nice. I haven't had anything out in the actual lawns. All the weeds that I've had so far this year have been on the edges where the tenacity was not sprayed. Nothing in the yard, but I keep seeing this one in particular just popping up like crazy all over the place, all around the edges. I just keep pulling them and tossing them to the side. But So this biochar, it's cool to the touch now. That's okay. So the problem with making biochar is your yields are relatively low compared to what you put in. So to make a massive amount of this, you would need a very small or a very large vessel. Um, but as you can see, that just crushes right up into a powder now. And that is great for the ground, for our soils. All these sticks, black all the way through, basically just charcoal now. Well, wow, those roots are really, really soft. 
Oh well, guys, so we got our own biochar now. That uh, could be ground up if I wanted to, spread across the yard, or mixed into a compost pile, or or whatever you want. And that is going to hold nutrients for hundreds of years to come for this soil and make it even more fertile, make the grass healthier, can help adjust pH. It's kind of a, an amazing product. So if you want to start adding some biochar to your lawn care program, I highly suggest you do, but I will leave a link to the uh, Anderson's biochar that I used um, on my lawn in the description down below. Oh, and if you do decide to make your own, even in a small batch like this, if you're gonna add it to a compost pile, a bucket this size is very, pretty good for a compost pile. But what I like to do is I just grab a hammer, sort of mash it up in there. That breaks it into pretty manageable sizes fairly easily. could just be dumped straight into your your pile or spread across your lawn like I'm about to do homemade biochar see ya